All right, so you want to get the title Shadow. This title came out in the season of Opulence, and it's actually pretty dang obtainable past Shadow Keep's release. So let's go over it. For starters, with the Shadow title, what you're gonna need is to complete. 16 Werner 99 weekly bounties. You can pick these up on Nessus by talking to Wiener 99 and picking up all of his bounties every single week. You can complete them on multiple characters to guarantee that you get this one done faster. This one should get done with about everything else. Just make sure you're picking up bounties consistently. Next is Like Clockwork. Complete a run through the Menagerie without running out of time in any encounter. This is pretty straightforward. Just beat the Menagerie encounters without letting the time hit zero and you will be fine here. The next one is Imperial Finery. Complete a run through the Menagerie in a complete set of opulent gear. Now how do you get the opulent gear you may ask? Well, later in the video, we will go over how to get the opulent gear, but this is basically what you're going to need is complete a menagerie run in the complete set. Prized fighter, defeat Arunak beloved by Kallus. This is the, Arunak is one of the weeks of bosses. I believe Arunak is the ogre boss. So when you're running Menagerie, just make sure you get the week with the ogre. Make sure to kill it. You're going to need to do all three bosses anyway, because next is Flare for Drama. Defeat Hasapiko, beloved by Kallus. I believe this one is the Minotaur. Make sure you have Hasapiko killed. And finally, Pagori, beloved by Kallus, which is the Hydra and is the final week of Menagerie. So just make sure you get all these bosses killed while you're running Menagerie. Next is the Hunted Becomes the... Dot, dot, dot. Probably dead. Just probably... Yeah, you're probably dead. Complete the Hunted and the Menagerie with time left on the clock. My recommendation for the Hunted is just to separate your group into three and three and make sure everybody is on the plates accordingly when the bosses come after you and the giant knights come after you. Just make sure that you have good communication. This one isn't too bad. Like I said, now that Season of Opulence has passed, a lot of these have become easier and this one is absolutely no exception. Parry, strike, parry. Complete the repost with time left on the clock. So the repost is simply with the swords. Just make sure you pick up swords, take off shields off of knights. Make sure you guys are running around as a team. What my team likes to do is have one person running tractor cannon so that you can constantly apply a debuff to one of these dudes and just make sure you keep swiping away with the swords. Also, left click, left click, right click, or R1, R1, R2, right bumper, right bumper, right trigger. That's a good way to get the shields off faster. Make sure you do that to get the shields off and then it's all right trigger, R2, and right click right after that. Next is going the distance. Get a perfect score in the gauntlet by having all six players complete every lap before time runs out. This was actually the easiest one to do a while ago because all you had to do was shoot a mountaintop across the finish line. If anybody remembers that, all you had to do was shoot a mountaintop across the finish line and you could actually hang out in the room too. There was a lot of ways you could cheese this one, but now once again, Season of Opulence has passed so this one is going to be very easy just make sure you're killing bosses trying to get as many players through the gauntlet as possible my recommendation here once again would be to go kind of slower make sure everybody gets through you're gonna have to speed up at some parts but if you guys can have some good communications here that is what is important next is safe haven defeat the ogres in the mockery in the menagerie so this one is probably the hardest one out of the regular menagerie ones to do, not including the heroic ones. So the mockery is actually kind of a funny joke. You know, Callus is a super sick comedian and he decided that he would make fun of Blind Well. So you have to get within the aura to maintain health so that before it starts depleting. Safe Haven is just saying that you need the aura on the right, the left, and the back of the room to all stay up the whole time while you kill everything and kill the ogres. So what I would do is split your group into three teams of two, two people to the right, two people to the left, two people back of the room, and make sure you're killing the wizards, picking up the orbs, dunking it, and then kill the ogres as well. You should have good communication for this one, and this one should be doable. It might take a couple of tries, but this one, once again, it's very doable. Season of Opulence has passed. Faster than lightning. Complete the Arcborn in the Menagerie with time left on the clock. This one 
is fairly straightforward. The Arcborn, you just have to pick up the little green auras, make sure you get three of them, and then dunk them into different places. This will give you more points, eventually having you fight the bosses, and then eventually you beating it. The Arcborn is one of the easier ones to do. Time manipulation. Complete the crystals in the Menagerie. This is actually probably my favorite encounter outside of Gauntlet in the Menagerie. Uh, the crystals are pretty simple. All you need to do is kill some harpies, pick up the crystals, shoot them at the purple crystals so you need to shoot the little guns at the purple crystals and then they'll blow up you kill the bosses it's pretty straightforward but what i would recommend here since there are three different levels there's the floor level first level second level is split up have two people on each level make sure that you get all the ads killed and this one should go by like nothing rolling deep slot runes in your chalice and collect rewards menagerie so this one this one's probably going to take you the most time so a lot of people, including myself, took advantage of when there was a bug in the menagerie that allowed you to run into different loading zones and keep slotting runes in your chalice. So you could get five, six, even seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever. You could get a bunch of runs in in your chalice. And it was a lot of fun. Bungie eventually patched it. There was a lot of back and forth between the community and Bungie about this one. But what I would recommend is just put on some Netflix, put on a podcast, maybe watch me on Twitch. I don't know, that was a bad plug. That was a bad plug. I'm probably gonna, nah, I'm not gonna cut that, but that was a bad plug. Slot your chalice and just keep running Menagerie. It's annoying, this one's gonna take you a while. I know this is the quick and easy series, but promise you, this one after they change the way that the, the, way that the chalice works, all that stuff, it's a lot harder than it used to be. All right, now we're getting to the heroic menagerie ones, which at the time were very, very difficult, but now they're pretty easy still. So I actually do have guides up on YouTube already for the heroic menagerie stuff, Pagori, Hasapiko, and Arunak. I, I have guides on all of them, so if you're curious, you can watch those. They're going to be a little bit outdated with buff stacks and debuff stacks, but the idea is still the same for the rooms, so you should still watch those for reference, and I highly recommend those videos. But essentially, you need to defeat the heroic menagerie all three weeks without any member of your fire team dying on the final boss. You can die before that, you just cannot die on the final boss. If anybody dies on the final boss, this triumph goes away. Next up is actually another guide that I made called Crown of Ease. Complete Crown of Sorrow flawlessly. So Crown of Ease was a lot easier back then. Wow, that is a really bad pun. It was a lot easier back then when we had the ability to stand in wells and shoot forever. Now it's gotten a little bit harder. Obviously, stick to what you're doing. You only need two people to go across the jumping puzzle. You don't need a full team for that. And then when you are at the end, what I would recommend for the third encounter boss, so the deception, is using a shotgun to kill the deception so that everybody's close. Maybe use Legend of Acrius. Use something like that that's going to be really good for that. And then for the final boss, I would still recommend the same loadouts. But what I would say instead is be ready to two-phase the boss. You're most likely not going to one-phase without some deaths. So you might as well enjoy your run and get a two-phase. But if you do go for the one phase, just make sure to check your timers. That's kind of the most important part. But once again, link will be provided for my Crown of Ease guide. Make sure you check that one out. Next up is Lost in the Kingdom of Sorrow. Loot the chest at the top of the pinnacle in the Crown of Sorrow raid five times. So this is pretty easy. In Crown of Sorrow, just loot the chest after the jumping puzzle and do it five times. So you can actually run back in and do it again. It doesn't need to drop another reward. You can just go back in and open the chest. Even if there's nothing, it'll count for the triumph. I'm not superstitious. You're superstitious. <gasps> Complete every encounter in the Crown of Sorrow raid with no guardian receiving Witch's Curse debuff. So, if you're running Crown of Sorrow and you notice that your screen turns red when you have the buff, and then it says Witch's Curse instead of Witch's Blessing, that means you're not getting the triumph done for that encounter. So make sure you're on top of your timers and clearing out each section as fast as possible. Make sure you're swapping appropriately and you will get this triumph no problem. Most of you probably already have it if you've been running Crown of Sorrows pretty frequently. Next up, and I have guides on two out of three of these challenges. I don't have a guide on the first one, so let me just go over it real quick. Limited blessings. So limited blessings, you can only have two people with the blessing in the first encounter. So that means everybody from the middle team 
when you split three teams of two the people who are in the middle they just don't get blessing the people on the left and right do or you can do it where the two people in the middle are your blessings and then they swap with two others but you can only have two blessings at once you can't have three it's a pretty easy challenge overall next up is total victory challenge which i do have a guide on how to do this one what i recommend is using anarchy and all you have to do is break the boss's shield five times when you're fighting it anarchy will make this one very very easy next up is with both hands crown of sorrow with both hands i have a guide on this one as well but to sum it up what you want to do is you want to have three teams of two obviously like you do on the final boss but you want to make sure each person on each team is only getting one hand at the end so what that means is let's say you're on the top side and the boss's damage is on whatever side team one aka top team are going to shoot both hands so one person will shoot the right one person will shoot the left only those two players will shoot it on the first damage phase on the second one the second group of people will do it on the third one same thing i have a guide on this already you guys should go watch it i'm going to say that a lot in this video but i have a lot of guides for this title already now finally we have mint in the box and that is earn the collections badge for season of opulence aka shadow title collections badge and this is where I was going to go into explaining the armor, how to slot your chalice to get the armor, the weapons, etc, etc. So basically, we have here a full list of weapons, emblems, shaders, ghosts, sparrows, swords, armor, etc, right? So you're going to need all of this for this title. Now, as far as the gear goes, and as far as the weapons, most of them at least, I am going to provide you a full chart of how to slot your chalice properly to get the right stuff that you need. A full in-depth look at how to do all this. I won't go over each one, all I can tell you is that you want to upgrade your chalice as much as possible if you want to get the armor, the opulent armor, you're going to need to upgrade your chalice as much as possible. The next one that I want to talk about is Rose. This one is done by completing the Lumina quest, which, wow, I have a guide on the Lumina quest. Dude, what don't I have a guide on in this season? Jesus. The rose, pretty simple. Just do that quest and you'll get the rose and that will complete it on there. Next one up that is kind of different is the Death's Razor or the Gold Tusk or the Throne Cleaver. These are all done through different characters. You can only use these on these characters. So... On my Warlock, Death's Razor is acquired after I beat a Heroic Menagerie. The boss will guarantee drop you one sword per account. It used to be completely random, and this is where a lot of people got stuck on doing all this stuff because Heroic Menagerie was already hard enough, but Death's Razor will guarantee a drop on your first kill of a Heroic Menagerie boss per account. So you're gonna have to get lucky with this one. But like I said, Heroic Menagerie is a lot easier than it used to be. So make sure, once again, you are doing the Heroic Menagerie on the character that you want to get this title done for first. As far as the Ghost Shell and the Sparrow, I believe, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong here in the comments, I believe both of these are just acquired by turning in Triumphs and you do get them as rewards. You will most likely get these over time. Now, as far as the shaders go, I believe you can pick up some of these from the Eververse, but I also believe that they drop on the weapons, they drop from the raid, they drop from Heroic Menagerie. You will just get these by dismantling and picking up things as you go. I'm not 100% sure on that one. The emblem, you will get this as you progress as well. Same with the Crown of Sorrow emblem, that is from completing the raid. And then finally, as far as the gear goes, for the raid, the Shadows gear, that one is acquired through beating the raid, and the Opulent gear, like we said, is acquired from the chart. Anyway, guys, that is the full Shadow title, and I'm sorry this one took me a while to make. I've been trying to work on some different things, trying to make some more creative build videos, and just trying to really focus on school and Twitch while I can, man. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you around. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the description. As always, vote on the poll for which title you want to see next, and follow me on Twitch for more updates, more talks, more bad jokes. Anyway, guys, love you. I'll see you later.